deck that when all this started. Kind of walk us through how it's been to see this evolve over the last 18 years. I've been on in this case since 2005 and everyone said that it couldn't happen, that Yaron Vandersloot would never see any form of justice. Now this isn't justice for the murder of Natalie Holloway, but it's pretty close because he could get 40 years for these two felonies and he only got 28 years for bludgeoning to death uh, Stephanie Flores to the point where she was unrecognizable. So this is justice. We want him to get a fair trial here in Alabama. Want, he's got a court-appointed lawyer because we do things that way here in this country. A jury will decide. And um, this really is an opportunity. Look, Ron Vandersloat showed Natalie Holloway Ruba, and now Beth Holloway is going to show Ron Vandersloat Birmingham, Alabama. And so when you learned that he was going to be here in Birmingham for the I, I didn't learn it. I've been part of this from the beginning. I talked to Beth Holloway anywhere from five to ten times a day. I'm much deeper in this case than you can imagine. How it, was it to be in the room with your advantage? You know, it's interesting. He came out and I thought that he'd look. I was seated next to Beth Holloway and I thought that he would look over at us because I'm the only one in this country that he knows because I've spent a weekend interviewing him in Thailand in 2008 and so um, I thought he would look over at me. He would certainly recognize me, and I'm certain he would recognize Beth, but he came in, he didn't look around. He was offered the opportunity to have a Dutch interpreter. Uh, he didn't take, he speaks fluent English. I mean, every time I've interviewed him over the course of 18 years, he has spoken English, there's no doubt. He said he'd hear it in English, it was a very short proceeding. He was told of his rights, he was told that, uh, how do you plead? He says not guilty, or his, actually his lawyer did that for him, and that was the end of it. But he never took, he never looked back at the people in the crowd, never looked back to see Beth Holloway or uh, Matt Holloway. Given your experience with him, what do you think was going through his mind? Uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time with him. I think that he's feeling very uncomfortable. Uh, you know, he didn't want to come here. I've, look, I've emailed back and forth with Ron many times over the years. He did not want to come to Alabama. He did not want to come to answer to this indictment. And here he is. And here he is. And, uh, you know, good for us because we're going to, you know, we give him a lawyer. He'll get a fair jury here. They'll find 12 people who say they can be fair. And he'll be tried on two counts. If convicted, he will get, he faces up to 40 years in prison, which will be a decision by the federal judge. Why do you think he didn't want to come here? Well, I know that he thinks, you know, first of all, he's got a, he's got a, he's got a situation in Peru that's not, that he's adapted to. He, he's got a lot of friends in the Peruvian prison. He's got a wife. He's got a girlfriend. I mean, it's a very, you know, comfortable existence for him. He's adapted to it. This is not a comfortable, he's going to be in a cell standing trial. And um, so I, I know he didn't want to come here. When's the last time you talked? I got four emails from him during my live show about two weeks ago. It was the last communication. Uh, I haven't spoken to him in a number of years, but you know, because he, he's been up in the mountains in Peru. What was his headspace like? Could you get it? Like, did he seem concerned? Was when? In the emails. Did you get it? Uh, he, he's cagey. He's smart. He's a very smart guy. Very smart guy. He's very cagey. I don't think we'll ever know what's going on in his head. Thank you, Brad. Yep. Yeah.